the other day I was trying to figure out what to review next when I heard this song. I find out this was made by the Gorillas and thought, hey, maybe I can review that song because of the band name. But then I find out the members are not Gorillas, but just cartoon humans. So not wanting to make a long excuse to do them anyway, I went deeper and found out that one of the group's creators was Jamie Hewlett, who also created Tank Girl, which had a movie. And I remember that having mutant kangaroos, so guess what we're looking at today? Released in 1995 and directed by Rachel Talalay, the Tank Girl movie was an attempt to bring the British comic about a wild woman riding tanks and kicking all kinds of ass to a broader audience overseas. Sadly, it ended badly as it was met with mixed to negative reviews flopping majorly at the box office with only $4 million of its $25 million budget and failing to match up to the surreal, insane nature of the comics, possibly due to studio interference with the entire thing. Now, I've never read the original comics, so I don't know the full extent to what it is capable of, but given the images I've seen, I'm sure it's a hundred times more exciting than what we're about to see, but what about on its own? Can it still be relatively enjoyable? Let's find out. This is Tank Girl. We open with a barrage of comic book images of Tank Girl that already look more promising than the real-life imagery this movie will bring. I mean, seriously, this looks awesome, and the soundtrack doesn't sound too bad either. We then get narration by our title character, played by Lori Petty, about what's going on. 2033. The world is screwed now. You see, a while ago, this humongous comet came crashing into the Earth. Bam! Total devastation. End of the world as we know it. No celebrities. No cable TV. No water. It hasn't rained in 11 years. Now, 20 people gotta squeeze inside the same bathtub. Damn. I mean, I know a major impact on the Earth can sometimes have devastating effects, but I didn't think it stopped rain from forming. Also again, without reading the comic, I wouldn't know how well they adapted her mannerisms. I mean, already she sounds unique, but the voice takes getting used to. So, dressing like a makeshift Tusken Raider riding a yak, Tank Girl, whose real name is Rebecca by the way, and I will be using that for now on, is trying to find something for her boyfriend while giving us more exposition. The Rippers are a demonic army of bloodthirsty, human-eating, purse-snatching, mutant creatures. Witness, Exhibit A. Ugh, you are so dead. They're led by the infamous Johnny Prophet. They spend most of their time raiding the WP. That's short for water and power. They control most of the water and got all the power. Hello, Lady Gaga. Or Katy Perry. Now here's where the stylization gets bizarre. Often they'll insert comic book images, whether it be to show characters yet to be seen, or more often to provide scene transitions. While the imagery looks nice, they tend to thrust it in so much that it either feels disjointed or forced. Sometimes I wonder if the reason they put in most of these images is because they don't have the right set pieces for them. Anyway, we meet Rebecca's boyfriend, who's part of a small resistance group opposing water and power, and is often forced into strange sexual-related rituals that only a crazy gun-wielding maniac like Rebecca can think of. There. 
did I tell you to stop? Jeez, any more and I'll have to start calling him Grey Fullbuster. We later cut to Water and Power HQ, where we meet our villain of the movie, Kesley, played by Malcolm McDowell. Adam was dust until God injected him with life. And do you know what was in that injection? Water. Water is life. Water is power. Indeed, water is definitely the most powerful of all the natural elements, which is why it just up and vanished on us either through evaporation or being buried under the entire continent of Australia. The Rippers will only be a minor setback. Hmm. Once I take care of them, that final crack of land will be ours. This crack of land, Captain. Oh. <laughs> well, just a small crack. Doesn't matter, we'll let that go. Mm. Oh my. Now look what's happened. We lost the fate of planes. And the Tennelson Ridge! And so on! There are three million liters of water underneath the blue dunes. And you will retrieve it. Do I make myself clear, gentlemen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good! And I already know who my favorite actor is in this movie. Remove your boots, Captain. Now come here. It's foolish not to carry out my order. And it was foolish to walk across a floor full of glass. If I were you, I wouldn't have done it. I would have killed me first. But you lack that courage, don't you, Captain? Come closer. So, you thank the guy for doing all that hard work, expect him to finish the job, then proceed to berate and murder him just so you can absorb the water he had in his body. I wonder if he's working part-time for Umbrella. We then see Rebecca doing some guard duty while acting like any bored person would. But you know, your guard post kinda sucks when it only covers the front of the house, and not the back, as we see someone with heat vision goggles seemingly sneaking up on her. Rebecca? Rebecca? <laughs> Got you. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. That was just Sam, but who had the heat vision goggles? Your steak tartare. Alright. First, go give me my food. Oh well, the boyfriend finds his birthday present and seemingly goes out to celebrate through a strange sex ritual. Don't come any closer. You gotta stay there and watch. This is a thing, and yet I wouldn't be surprised if she did this in the comics. You can come a little bit closer, but you can't touch. <laughs> oh my god, that looks so stupid! Somebody maim that. I want to cherish this for the rest of my life. So it looks like WMP's little ninja squad found their base and starts killing anyone who resists. And this guy apparently likes getting turned on by... Snip snip time? Whatever. But is an idiot as he lets himself get outsmarted and well... Boom goes the ninja! And now it's time for everyone's favorite cliche. Everyone has terrible aim except for the main character. Ah! 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 Ah!
along the line. Also, the boyfriend's dead. Woo hoo. You've been stealing water. Not smart. Whoa, 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 whoa. You could have a lot of fun with this. Yeah, you're only letting her live so that you can abuse her in ways I don't even want to say aloud. And they kill the yak for no reason. And it's here I have to question just how far Rebecca would go in character, even in a situation like this where they could so easily kill her off. I ask this because she ends up snapping this guy's neck with her legs. She just killed a man, and they won't put her down? Really? So she's taken to Kesley, who after finding out what she did, offers her a chance to serve him. But of course, she turns him down. So she's put to work in the dirt mines as a slave. I guess it's as good a time as any to put in a dirt shower scene. You've got a wall to find Never find a way Tank Girl! Wild, crazy, and possibly insane, and likes to show her distress by slowly dousing herself in dirt. She spots this one woman from an earlier scene being harassed by who I think is Sergeant Small, and I think I understand why he's named that. Quit picking on my girlfriend! And things just got interesting. So this is Jet Girl, played by Naomi Watts, who earlier seems to be an expert mechanic and possibly an expert hacker who is also a major character in the comics. No doubt she'll be important later on, but for now, we need to watch Rebecca go through a tank fetish, mixed in with even more comic book imagery. I'm in love. Guys, if you want the comic book imagery in so much, make it mean something. Don't just substitute it for any ongoing action, otherwise you wear down whatever present of style you were going for. So Rebecca wants to leave, but Jet Girl is broken so much that she doesn't want to help. Kesley, on the other hand, wants to break Rebecca some more, but it seems no matter what he does, she just keeps her tough gal snark. So he decides to drop her down the pipe, which only gets smaller the further down she goes, and after reaching a stopping point, she has a freak out. Actually, that would have been a rather good time to pull out the most graphically insane comic book imagery, especially if it meant being all in her head and going insane. I mean, if anything, they were doing it in places where it's not needed, when they should be implementing it in cases like this. It's all in the timing, really, and they're missing most of it. Later, we see an outpost having been destroyed by the Rippers, so Kesley decides they should send Rebecca out to find them by going down a subgate that might lead to their base. However, they're ambushed by the Rippers, and as Jet Girl, who somehow stole away on this one plane and forcibly ejected the pilot, sees that the Rippers look like poor alien rejects. Huh. Well, it looks like Kesley is dead, and Jet Girl comes down to join Rebecca in their escape. But Rebecca wants to operate the tank, accidentally hits Jet Girl, and we get... an animated sequence this time? Sorry about the bunker on the head. I think I need to go practice some more. No! Yes. Take that! No! No! Yes. Okay, why couldn't the movie just be like this the whole time? This looks cool! You get the satisfactory of the comic book, but in actual animated format. You get all the freaky imagery and wouldn't have to lose the feel of it. No, instead we have more live action stuff, and it turns out Kesley lived but is gravely injured. Luckily, some Chinese cybergenetic surgeon named Chisai, played by James Hong of all people, offers to reconstruct him at the cost of Dr. Lady's water. Meanwhile, our heroes run into this crazy chick named Subgirl, played by Ann Kuzak, who tells them that Sam, that little girl we kept seeing, is being forced to work at a club called The Liquid Silver. So it's time to go and rescue her, but first, freaky comic transition!
now. Washer changed costumes faster than Lady Gaga in a music video. Anyway, Liquid Silver. Well, I can tell Silver is the theme, and there's a lot of liquid. Not just water, though. And the only one standing out is the Madame, who looks like a recurring Tank Girl character, but is underutilized in this movie. Oh, and get this. In order to search for Sam, they need to go in disguise, so we get this strangely edited scene of Rebecca trying to look like the other showgirls while ignoring the AI telling her what to do. Let's end the mules. It's spiraling arm cut. And now, the wrap skirt. You have now finished creating your look. If you have followed instructions properly, you should appear as so. Lock up your son. Isn't it a bit, well, too short? I know, isn't that great? And unrestrictive. I guess so. Well, really, this whole infiltration thing seems pointless, as they find Sam after she uses the Ball of Blades thing on Iggy Pop here, and get out without much trouble. There she is! Uh-oh! The little girl! Get them! Guards! Hurry! Kill her! Kill them both! Not a good idea! Like I said, not much trouble. Either I improve that lovely hairdo. <sighs> or you sing for us. All right, what do you want me to sing? Let's do it. Cole Porter, 1928. <sighs> I hate that song. I'll cut it off. When the little blue bird, who has never said a word, starts to sing, Spring, spring, louder! I can't hear you. When a little blue clerk in the middle of his work starts a tune to the moon above all. Everybody! Let's do it, please do it. Please do it. Please do it. Let's do it! Let's fall in in Tank Girl can you force an entire club to sing old show tunes through guns and freaky dancing. By the way, weren't you leaving? If you keep this up, WNP might come and oh look, they came to crash the party. Way to go, Rebecca. Now Sam gets to face Dr. Claw on steroids. Yes, really. Your friends will be along shortly to save you, my little princess. <laughs> So Rebecca and Jet Girl search the desert for the Rippers as they're the only hope they have of rescuing her now, and well, they find their base and get caught. Now get ready, for you ever wanted to see what happens when you mix warriors of virtue with drugs? Meet the Rippers, ladies and gentlemen. These guys are super soldiers who were once human, but given kangaroo DNA. However, originally they were going to be regular mutant kangaroos like in the comics, but then they got changed. Anyway, while some of them want to kill the two, the others, including one in particular named Booga, say to let them live for now. Speaking of Booga, because he's actually a dog who turned kangaroo, he exposits how they came to be and that their creator was Johnny Prophet. In any case, the Rippers overhear about a shipment going down and thinking it might be a trap, decide to send the girls since if it is a trap, they would die in their place. So the girls go in and begin spying on the possible shipment. The best way to get photographs is to pose like calendar agents. We are doing a men of water and power calendar. Oh. And I think you would be the perfect Supermodel cover. Oh. Okay. 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 
Yes, I like that. Those are definitely weapons in those crates. We better move. No way. The whole thing is so convenient, man. If they want to be down with us, tell them to hijack the shipment themselves. You're just never satisfied, are you? Whoever you are. But now here we go. Some actual tank action. I know! It's like Rambo Syndrome or something. One crazy action scene later, they get the shipment and head back to the Ripper's place where they have dinner and a dance. I said a hip pop, the hippie, the hippie to the hip hip pop, and you don't stop the rock, do the bang bang, pull the set up, jump the movie to the rhythm of the I am Jackie Lynch, and I'd like to say, I Okay, but really, it's the post-apocalyptic future, and he's pretty much sapient, so I don't think anyone would care. So they begin to open the crates, only to find nothing but dirt. Well, except one that has the dead body of Prophet inside. Hmm... Should I use a Star Wars clip, or the breakdown scene from the room? I know! Let's use both! No! time for the assault, Jet Girl plans to land their plane into the base while Rebecca goes through the front gate with her tank. Also, they've been holding off Kesley's face for a while. I wonder what they're building up to. Well, he's going to have Sam drown in the pipe from earlier, so they better hurry up. Well, there are power boxes down at the end of this aisle. If only we could get to them. Later, cats. British Kangaroo sacrifices himself to shut down the power and ends up with a few bullets in him. This gets the others enraged, and they go berserk on their asses. Rebecca goes looking for Sam, only to run into Kesley, who decides to pull a Tron by imitating a small child. I can't breathe! Uh, what? It's the same face as before! Nothing's changed! Why hide it if you're not gonna change anything? That's a terrible waste of build-up! I played you like an old fiddle. Well, uh, maybe we could, uh, wait till another fly does a routine scout. We capture his ID code and we're in. Brilliant! Jen, she's been working for you this whole time. No, you were. You're a walking, talking, living microphone. I had them planted all over your body. Well, that was a pointless attempt to pull a plot twist. Even then, we wouldn't have forgotten about the tracker from earlier, so there's no way we would have suspected Jet Girl of doing anything wrong. Idiot. Alright, fight time. How will she take him down? Through cunning and wit and overall badassery? Or just hit him with an awkwardly placed cutaway? p p, -p pale Oh, I get it. It's a holographic head. But, wait. Then, how is he even alive? Where's his brain? Or, what's keeping his body going on without his real head? Anyway, more fighting, and this time the comic book imagery is used badly, since even in one instance where she dodges, it's like she was hit. What, now you don't want her actually getting hurt on camera? I won, and you know it. Say it, say it. Just say, I won. I won. No! No! Say, I won. I won! Say it. And the little girl lives. 
I'd rather her die than live as your slave. Right before others. Our hero, ladies and gentlemen. Well, her sentient tank shows up and saves her, but seems to be out of ammo. So she has to resort to using beer cans before eventually realizing, hey, I can shoot that bucket of water that's conveniently over his head. That will short circuit him. Is that our best you can do? Try this close to your heart, asshole. Did I hurt you yet? Rest in peace, oh great McDowell. Jet Girl gets her revenge on Sergeant Small for all the times he harassed her. Rebecca saves Sam, and Booga saves Rebecca by seemingly having controlled the soldiers. Well, after killing most of them, I can see why. And then we end on another animated scene where all the water is released and Rebecca has the Rippers go water skiing. Rebecca, hit the brakes! Waterfall ahead! Shut up! Don't ruin the surprise! <laughs> So that's Tank Girl. What a mess of a movie. This film is just all over the place, from the visuals, the characters, and the story. I mean, I do like a lot of the snark that Rebecca has. She seems like a lot of fun, as does Jet Girl, and even Kesley is quite enjoyable. The thing is, they don't exactly carry the plot all that well. Especially when they try to rely on the comic book images and animated scenes that often force themselves in just to try and make it more presentable. Besides which, I feel like they should have done this all animated and worked the crazy story within that. Honestly, if this was the result of studio interference, then I wonder what would have happened if they were able to freely produce this in homage to the comics. Heck, I'm even more curious as to what goes on in those comics, so thanks for wanting me to look at the source material. Really, if you want a cheesy action flick with crazy imagery and wacky characters, I'd say grab some beer and have a drink night with this film. I'm sure lots of fun can be had from it. I'm the Media Hunter. Media's my prey, and reviewing them my way.